This is an atom. More specifically, it's the model of an atom that is very helpful when thinking about radiation and half-lives. It's made up of protons and neutrons in its nucleus, and electrons orbiting the nucleus in orbitals. When thinking about radioactive decay, there are some important pieces of background knowledge. Firstly, the protons and neutrons are held together by the strong nuclear force, one of the four fundamental forces. And this force is in a delicate balance with the electromagnetic force, which opposes it. I say it opposes it because protons have a positive charge, and if they got close together, they would repel each other via the electromagnetic force. Now the strong force is only able to just balance the electromagnetic repulsion and cause attraction at short distances. Luckily for us, neutrons are the perfect thing to keep the protons far enough apart that the repulsive force is cancelled out by the strong attractive force. This actually also explains why, as the proton number increases, the number of neutrons increases as well. With that knowledge, we can now start talking about different forms of radioactive decay, and maybe it becomes clear why some isotopes of elements are unstable. Their ratio of neutrons and protons doesn't allow for optimal attraction, and so every so often they release a form of radiation to become more stable. Which forms of radiation, you ask? Well, to answer that question, we'll have to study an atom of uranium-238 as it slowly and randomly decays. Uranium-238 has a half-life, that is to say the time taken for half a sample of a radioactive substance's atoms to decay, of 4.5 billion years. But each atom spontaneously and randomly emits radiation, so we'll have to watch it carefully. 2,000 years later. There it is, the first form of emission, two neutrons and two protons in a helium nuclei. For simplicity, this type of decay is called an alpha particle. We now have to wait until our newly created thorium-234 nucleus, who has a half-life of 24 days, emits the next form of radiation. One eternity later. Oh, you might have missed that one, so let's zoom in. Thorium is still unstable, so every once in a while, one of its neutrons changes into a proton, and in doing so, releases an electron and an antineutrino in order to maintain conservation of charge and conservation of baryon and lepton number. You don't really have to know that. For simplicity, this decay of a neutron into a proton, electron, and antineutrino is called beta decay, and the electron is called a beta particle. So that's two forms of radiation, but there is a third. In fact, this third form of radiation is released during both alpha and beta decay, gamma rays. They are high energy electromagnetic waves. Basically, they're gamma rays. If you know about the EM spectrum, you know that that's the highest frequency form of electromagnetic radiation. So those are the three types of decay, alpha, beta, and gamma. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, then be sure to try some other videos. Bye-bye.